high greedy 3Ds. When we talk about exposure settings for resin, it is one of the key factors in what can cause failures of your prints. There are two spectrums to it. There's either overexposure or underexposure. And depending on which side of the fence you are will depend on whether you get nothing printed on one hand, or on the other hand, something does print, but it doesn't give you the definition that your print and your model deserves. So what can we do to look at what is the correct exposure setting for your printer and your resin? Well, a lot of people go to forums, they talk to their friends and they look at the, have you got the same printer as me? Are you using the same resin as me? But unfortunately, that doesn't always give you the answer that you need because there are factors you have to take into consideration when you look at the exposure time of your resin. You've got some internal factors. You've got what printer are you using? How old is that printer? Now, some printers like the Mono X, you can adjust the sensitivity of the light, the brightness of the light, and that will have a bearing on it. You've also got to look at the resin you're using. Is it Elecubic? Is it Elegoo? Is it Sunlu? Is it any other brand? How old is that resin? What colour is that resin? Because the colour can change the, the way the light goes through it. Uh, is it coming to the end of its natural life? Is it brand new? Um, you, you can also need to look at things along the lines of what's the temperature of your printing environment? What's the humidity of your printing environment? So there are lots of factors whereby one setting does not fit all answers. So what we're going to do today is have a look at a way and I'll show you how you can do a quick, cheap, easy test to see if your resin is getting the correct exposure and you are getting the best results. Now there are a number of exposure tests out there but today we're going to use this the Frozen XP Finder and first of all let's see where we get it from and how we use it. So first things first, this is where you get the Frozen XP tester from. I'll put links in the description so you can follow that. And uh, once you get onto this page, you can also see some guidance on how to use the test, which we'll talk about a little bit more as we go through. Now, if you can't find it on the actual Frozen website, there is a link also in Thingiverse that I will also put in the description. So there's a couple of places you can get this nice easy free to download file from. So we've downloaded the file onto Chitterbox. I'm using Chitterbox 1.9.4. You may choose to use Lychee or some other slicer but I'm using Chitterbox for today but the principle will be on the whole the same. What you need to do is go into your settings, go into print and here you will see some of the figures as you can see there. There's a couple of important ones, layer height, now that's going to be set initially to 0.050, I would leave it at that. Bottom layer count is 5 and exposure time and bottom exposure time would be the two main players today. Now bottom exposure time as a general rule of thumb I leave at 30 but you can multiply your final exposure time by 10 to give you your optimal bottom time. So for example if this was 2.5 then my bottom time could be 25 but I always leave it at 30 and very rarely have any problems with it sticking to the build plate. Now if your print does not stick to the build plate at all that may be down to the fact that your bottom exposure time needs to go up a little bit. If it's welded onto the plate and you need to chisel it off then it's uh, it's probably too high so needs to come down. Now when we look at the exposure time if this is showing at the moment 2.5 this will show you the amount of time each layer after it's done its first five layers for the base will see the ultraviolet light and this is the figure that we're going to change so what I'm going to do is just go into my keyboard and change that to 2.3 once I've done it there's no save button you just click close and then we'll go across to slice and we'll slice it and you can see it's going to take less than 15 minutes and use 3.7 uh, grams of material, virtually nothing at all. Now, uh, when you save that file, just save it and call it whatever you want to, but just add 2.3 at the end, just so when you get it to your printer, you know that you're saving that 2.3 file. And once you've saved that onto your printer, go back, go back into settings, change this setting here to 2.4, press the X, slice it, save it again and obviously call it 2.4 this time and keep doing that 
till you get to the one you want. Now, I usually start at 2.5. I usually do a 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, 2.6, and maybe a 2.7 or 2.8, depending on how it's going. But I'm only going to do four today, starting at 2.3 and finishing at 2.6. And that is how you slice that. And that is how you make the differences to the time on the base layer. Now in my last video, you'll have seen that I reviewed this Sun Lu resin, but I didn't do an exposure test at that time. So this is the resin I'm going to be using today to do an exposure test to it. Now you don't want loads and loads of resin in your vat, purely because if something goes wrong and you need to empty that vat, the more you put in, the more you'll need to get out. So, and you've got to consider this is only using a, a, a Nat's knacker really of resin to, to print it. So just put a little bit in there to make sure it covers exactly what you need find the first file that you're after and don't forget we're doing the 2.3 file first find that in your usb drive and just tell it to print that file now as i say you know lots of factors will change your resin their age the temperature outside inside what color is the resin is it water washable is it normal is it one of the plant based ones, all these will affect the exposure time testing and what will be your optimal exposure time for your resin. So it's really, really important to just take an hour out of your day and at the start of your printing process, just to run these tests to make sure that you are getting optimal tests. The last thing you want to do is come back eight hours later and just see a couple of supports sticking out uh, of on your bill plate, which, which would show that you're underexposed. Do bypass all of that just do a couple of exposure tests so there's the first one going into my printer and uh, i will come back to this in less than 15 minutes time and it will be done and dusted and ready for the next step 15 minutes later and it's all printed and there it is sat on the bottom of the bill plate first thing i want to check is how easy does it come off the bill plate now if it's welded on your exposure time for the bottom layers are too much if you just scrape it off really easy then your settings are pretty much right if you find that things do not stick to your bill plate then you may need to increase that bottom layer time but i'm using 30 here into the ipa and i'm cleaning it thoroughly with a little brush and over to my uh, light, my UV light, and I'm going to cure it for as you would any other print. Now, before we check the end result, let's just have a look at some of the things you're looking for. Check the side panels first. As you can see, the center one, it's nice and square. The edges are well defined. If it's overexposed, you can see that it's rounded and looks poor. And the same for the underexposed. The logo in the center, you need to make sure you can see the little tiny hole and the other hole and everything doesn't look wishy-washy. As you can see there, underexposure will give you virtually nothing and overexposure will blur it. And the pillars, you can also see that uh, if you underexpose, some of them just don't print. And if you overexpose them, them, they look a bit flat and over expanded um, so that gives you an idea of what you're looking for in that section and finally with the text if you can read the text and it's fine that's grand if it's underexposed there'll be letters missing and it'll look really really pale if it's overexposed it will look really really flat and horrible okay so let's start on 2.3 seconds and have a look well straight away there you can see that part of the T has not printed at all so we've got some underexposure there you can see if we look at the edges they're a little bit blurred they're not crisp and the center logo there looks a little bit wishy-washy not only a horrendous print by a long shot but certainly not what we want okay so let's move it up one to the 2.4 seconds and have a look at that okay well this time the Letters have printed, but they look a little bit sparse. They look a little bit poor, a little bit better print quality there, but you can still see some inadequacies on it. Now, it's really difficult for, for you guys maybe to see what I'm seeing, but I'm certainly seeing that the bars over on the left hand side just don't look crisp. They get in there, but they just don't look it yet. So let's take it up a notch to 2.5 seconds. Now, 2.5 seconds. Oh, I'm starting to see some much better writing there. 
all the little circles look like they've printed lovely. The bars on the left and the right look nice and square and the emblem in the centre, yep, that's definitely got the holes it needs to and it's nice and even. So I think 2.5 seems to be the best to use at the moment, but let's take it up to 2.6 and have a look. Okay, now on 2.6. Yeah, not horrendous. We're losing a little bit of the quality. Look back at the centerpiece. It's just slightly off. I think the sides of it, the bars on the side are not looking quite as crisp as they were. And again, with the circles, not as crisp. I think we found our prime time in 2.5. And that is what we'll be using when we go forward. I'm quite happy with 2.5 and a 30 second base layer exposure time seems to work optimally for this resin. So let's run a print and see what happens. I'm doing a Judge Dread file and I really am happy with the result that's come out. There's some really fine detail in this print that's come out just fine. And there's some intricate details like this chain. Now if the settings were well off, that chain would not print uh, uh, just floating around there as it was. And with the bigger pieces, I'm really happy. There's no holes, there's no gaps. Everything looks crisp. Everything looks clean. Um, I found my setting here at 2.5. The exposure test has done its job admirably. Now I hope you find this useful. I hope you've learned something from this. I'd be keen to hear your thoughts and comments. Uh, and I hope you found something of use today and I'll see you next time on Greedy3D. Thank you.